Okay. Um, welcome everyone. Good afternoon. Let me introduce myself. I am Li Wenxiang from Utah. I'm also the KLESF Secretariat. Welcome to today's KLESF STEM webinar. The title is Immersing into Creative Innovative Pathway Mobility Crusader. Okay, just a little housekeeping before we uh, get started. Huh? If you have any question um, during the presentation, you can type them into the uh, question. Uh, so you can type the question into the chat box. We will bring them up uh, for the speaker during the Q&A session. So we are streaming this webinar live on KLESF Facebook page. Please help us to like and share this video. If you have any um, issue, get disconnected at the Zoom. You can also join our Facebook uh, page for this webinar. Okay, now I would like to introduce our speaker today. He's Ong Paul Sheng. So um, I just call him Paul. Okay, Paul is a young teenager student at the uh, Epson College. He's a Malaysian Chinese student researcher, entrepreneur, and also inventor. He was the gold winner for our both KLSF International Challenge 2017 and 20, uh, just last year 2020 with Two of his invention projects. This has proven that um, his consistency and determination in this successful innovation pathway. So Paul is also the chief executive officer and founder of Cambridge Global Institute, um, short we call CGI, committed to inspiring, empowering and promoting STEM to uh, youth globally. So CGI is assisting teenagers to discover their untapped potential in STEM by providing uh, the teens a globalized premier enrichment platform for them to unlock their potential uh, to the fullest. So in CGI, the company has the aim nurturing the next generation of talented youth. To achieve this, the company is working on providing the tools necessary to turn the student's idea into reality. So additionally, he was also um, an invited speaker at the 2020 IEEE Electron Devices Technology and Manufacturing Conference, uh, short is EDTM, and he has spoken in many conferences around the world. So his internationally recognized scientific research has been presented and awarded uh, top honors at like, Taiwan International Science Fair, International Invention, and so International Innovation and Invention Competition in Canada, World Innovative Invention Competition, Asia Pac uh, Asia Pacific Science Conference for Young Scientists, Asia Pacific ICT Awards, um, the SCCIM uh, STI Competition, Tan Kai Young Innovator Award, and many more. So um, Paul is your average teenager optimistic for the future, trying to balance it all and pursuing his passion. Now, without further ado, we'll turn time over to Paul. Okay, now I pass the session to you, Paul. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is my pleasure to be here today, and um, thank you to the Mingu Science Nagara organizers for the honor and the privilege. So today's webinar is a prestigious platform for me to be invited to present to you Immersing into Creative Innovation Pathway, Mobility Crusader, and how to be a change maker for 2021. So to brief everyone about myself, I'm Ong Paul Xiong, a 17 years old researcher, innovator and entrepreneur at Epson College. My main motive in the field of innovation and invention is to create genuine solutions for the world's most pressing issues. What simply started out as a science fair project led me on choosing an urgent global issue each year to develop an affordable, reliable, robust solution for solving these obstacles. This includes my scientific research on developing a medical equipment to empower cancer cell early diagnosis and treatment with the integration of artificial intelligence and computational imaging system. And the other projects are new generation mobility aid device, which is known as Mobility Crusader, economical humanoid robot for firefighting, intelligent and automated healthcare system, the medical crusader, Amazon portage system, and many more. I have been working with top institutes such as University Science Malaysia and Cambridge University. For my innovation and research, I have been achieving numerous international and national recognitions. 
So in my webinar today, I would like to share my experience in the innovation pathway and also deliver some wise suggestions to fellow audience on the guidelines to be a change maker for the future world, especially after this COVID-19 pandemic. And I hope that the webinar today will provide some enlightenment to everyone and ignite your interest in both STEAM and innovation. So at the age of 15, I learned about my grandfather's diagnosis of osteoarthritis, which required him to use the walking frame. He would rather stay at his home in his own neighborhood, where he's surrounded by his personal belongings, his neighbors, and feel comfortable. Hence, he refused to stay with us. To make him feel safe and secure, while at home as well as on the go, I started to explore a product which can prevent any fall and notify us when there's a fall. After serving the internet, although there are four detection devices, but none of them have preventive functions. Furthermore, product that could be installed on walking frame to prevent people who undergo rehabilitation from falling are still unavailable in a medical supply store. I also attempt to utilize smartphones to assist my grandfather. Unfortunately, smartphones has a limitation with continuous sensing operation and the stability of the accelerometer's sampling frequency. So this proved that assisting technology didn't provide a solution to my problem. Hence, I'm inspired to dig more deeply into the future of medical devices, which is customizable for elderly. Fall is extremely dangerous, as it is the second leading cause of unintentional or accidental injury death worldwide. Every year, 2.5 million of elderly are treated in emergency rooms because of fall. Nine out of 10 fall occurs at home, and normally when no one else is around. 10% of fall will lead to major injury fractures and brain trauma. Lying on the floor due to a fall event may result in negative psychological, which is the fear of falling when they're doing social and physical activities. In short, fall among seniors are common, costly, and preventive. To share an eye-popping statistics, the life expectancy has increased by the rate of five years since year 2000, due to the advances in medical field. And according to the World Health Organization, by year 2050, the current population of the elderly people, which is 8.5%, will increase to 20% of the world population. Approximately 30% of people over 65 years old suffer from accidental fall each year. And for elderly over 80 years, the rate of falling reaches 50%. Isn't it unbelievable? The frequency of fall increases with age and frailty level due to the fact that they may suffer from low level of physical strength result from muscle weaknesses, which affects their motion ability significantly. Similarly, Parkinson patients with neurodegenerative disorder may have mobility impairments. The impact of mobility impairment will put these patients at risk of fall. Besides the risk of falling, cognitive decline which associates with memory problem is also a vast challenge in Parkinson patients. So these patients, they are at risk of wandering and confused even in familiar places. Patients with PD is alarming in our society. There are approximately 10 million people worldwide are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. I've always been desired to achieve the aim of inventing a system embedded with gyroscope in order to salvage elderly from serious injury due to fall. Secondly, is to develop a framework which provides navigation assistance through creating an Android app named Save Me Before Fall. This will facilitate real-time tracking of user protect their safety, and elevate their burdens on the family members. Thirdly, to design a robust system with no limitation, yet simple platform with high reliability for mitigation and has the capability of simultaneously send warning messages. In a nutshell, by inventing this system, we are able to keep elderly safe, healthy, and independent. You're definitely eager to know how this system works, right? So here's the explanation for you. 
When the ultrasonic sensor and infrared obstacles avoidance sensors detects obstacles, they will trigger the vibrator and the vibrator elevated in the handle will provide a sense of alert for users or elderly to avoid the obstacles confronting them. Gyroscope sensors and GPS module in the main control unit system will be responsible for real-time monitoring and triggering framework. All the data and location of the users are displayed in an Android app, which was designed using Android Studio. During a fall event, the gyroscope sensor will activate the embedded buzzer, which alerts per people surrounding the user, and autonomously dial function to emergency contact personnel. In addition, this real-time monitoring pulse sensor system will continuously prompt health parameters in the Android app when a finger is detected. So these will help caretakers or doctors to monitor the patient's health condition. During the prototyping stage of my invention, I started by designing this system with a simple breadboard. The wiring looks absolutely untidy. So in order to make it into a marketable product, I designed this system by applying CS Eagle software where it is suitable for primary users to start designing circuits and plan the arrangement of copper wire circuit from scratch. So the schematic diagram shows the connection of wire between the sensors, whereas the PCB layout as well as the circuit layout is what you could observe here. So the robust system incorporates two core algorithms, four prevention algorithm and the four detection algorithm. So the fall prevention framework integrates the ultrasonic sensor with the infrared sensor. Ultrasonic sensor caters for narrow view and further distance, whereas infrared sensor accommodates wider view and nearer distance. So this will increase the accuracy of the platform. To assess fall, gyroscope is implanted into the fall detection feature. And when this fall is detected, the system will automatically start communicating with names in the emergency contact list, acquire global positioning system, and provide a map of four location. So the pulse rate parameter is essential to monitor in order to boost the fall prevention rate. The design device is embedded with a triaxial gyroscope, which has the capability of running a complex specific fault detection algorithm. We have set a specific threshold for the yaw, pitch, and row value in the gyroscope. When the access value exceeds that threshold, it will trigger the fault detection algorithm. In addition, ultrasonic and infrared sensors are coded in such a way that 
if the distance between the obstacles and the sensor increases to a value of more than x. It will trigger the buzzer. Ultrasonic sensors emit strong, a short, but high frequency sound pulses at irregular intervals. If they strike an object, then they are reflected back as echo signals to the sensors, which itself computes the distance to the target base on the time span between the emitting the signals and receiving the echo. On the other hand, the infrared emitter is an IR LED and the detector is an IR photodiode. The IR photodiode is sensitive to infrared light emitted by the IR LED. When the IR transmitter emits infrared radiation, it reaches the object and some of the radiation will reflect back to the IR receiver. So now we have come to the communication and triggering framework. In this system, a GPS module is implanted to retrieve locations from the Google Map Navigator and then continuously send the location to Google Place API. The working or operation of the global positioning system is based on the trial declaration mathematical principle. And the position is determined from the distance measurement to satellites. Every three seconds, the non-MCU Wi-Fi module will then transmit all the data collected by the microcontroller to the PHP MySQL, which is the cloud. And all the collected data will prompt out in a safely before fall Android app. What makes this system so unique? I appreciate that this invented system as the first invention with high sensitivity through utilizing three multiple sensors, which is capable to help the aging society and give family members a peace of mind. What's more, this portable standalone system is feasible to mount on any mobility-aided devices. And the Mobility Crusader is the first revolutionary mobility device that has the intelligent IoT gateway competency, yet utilizing low-cost microcontroller. Without any doubt, the Mobility Crusader has extensive consumers ranging from elderly, Parkinson patients to you visually impaired people. Elderly population continues to grow dramatically at an unprecedented rate, which is projected to reach nearly 30% of the world's population by year 2050. And these statistics clearly show that the new generation mobility support device will become a mandate near the future for the aging society. Moreover, approximately 10 million of the worldwide population are diagnosed with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's diseases. Humans are not robots. We all have unique anatomy. So this customizable medical device is the future of healthcare. The reliable, economical, and senior-friendly device is definitely a substantial contribution to the aging society. Up next, I would like to direct all of the audience's attention to immerse into my successful innovation journey. Growing up as a curious child with a plethora of questions, I remember visiting my first Asimo Robotic exhibition in year 2008. Asimo is a bipedal human robot that Honda has been developing with the goal to develop robots that will coexist with and be useful to people since its first introduction in year 2000. This memorable experience has ignited my inspiration to explore into robotics and programming. In grade four, I was given the opportunity to be involved in robotic workshops back in my primary school days during the weekends. So after several months of involvement in the robotic lessons, my parents decided to award me with a Lego Mindstorm AV3 Education Robotics set due to my strong passion in robotics. I remember being in a team with my friend Eugene to participate in our first involvement in robotic competitions and we won the robotic championship. This achievement have gave me the determination and motivation to start my first innovation project which also successfully attained gold medal in KL Engineering Science Fair 2017. 
It was the economical human remote sensing robot for firefighting where this robot is capable of self-patrolling within predefined paths and detects fire without any human intervention. I remember meeting YB Shaikh Muzaffar Shubo, who was the first Malaysian astronaut to visit the space station in year 2007 during one of my innovation competitions. He inspired me by mentioning this quote from, from an American astronaut, Neil Armstrong, that one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. This has widened my perspective on the innovation pathway and all discovery comes from curiosity, observations, a positive attitude, and innovative thinking are key factors to success. Hence, be bold and start to explore new solutions in order to be a change maker and solve the world's most pressing issues and challenges. What it meant to be a change maker? It meant to align your passions with your wanting to do good and make a breakthrough for this world. Being a change maker means being someone who is able to inspire others, being able to adapt the changes around you, and being able to become the change that you want to see happen. By actively tackling a social problem, a change maker demonstrates that they are motivated to act. As the saying goes, action speaks louder than words. It is not enough to have the intention to do something good, but intention must be translated into actions. This begins by having empathy for others, identifying a specific problem or opportunity to tackle, and giving yourself the permission to do something about it. It doesn't stop there. A change maker keeps on trying and trying until they have made a difference. So let me give you an example of a change maker. A young child who wants to recycle plastics rather than letting plastics and hurt the local wildlife, he has taken the first step in change making. But if one day recycling becomes a commonplace, this doesn't mean that everyone is a change maker. But the change maker is someone who will actively try to solve the next major challenge in managing resources. But why you should become a change maker? I believe that becoming an agent of change is the key to satisfaction and to be successful. One should strive for their goals and aims to be a successful change maker. It is totally priceless to minder in high school or in university and then compound the knowledge for the next 50 to 60 years after finding what you're truly passionate about. Instead of graduating, getting a nice corporate job and realizing in your 40s that no, this is something that no, I want to pursue it. So there's a drastic half-life for an individual's ability to take race as they age. So I urge you all to get started on a journey of change making. Now you're probably thinking that Paul has shared a lot of his philosophy and history, and he better tell me some actionable steps and recipes to be a change maker. Okay, so first, you have to start off by discovering a hard problem that you are passionate about. I understand that this is not a simple process to explore a problem to solve. Hence, I would like to recommend you to try to observe every small matter in life carefully and have the courage to ask. These observations may inspire you towards an innovative invention in the future. Additionally, fundamentals of great invention is the ability to accommodate human needs in every situation and the ability to repeat itself easily. Two, develop skills and accumulate knowledges that assist in developing novel innovations. So questioning is one of the learning methods used to gain new knowledges. And we should always observe our surroundings and question existing knowledges. We should use experiments to prove our hypothesis right. Apart from observation skills, we must possess the ability to analyze logically, hypothesize any accidental discovery, as well as to study and prove the hypothesis to be true. As theory and practice must come 
and carry out simultaneously in the process of learning. Getting yourself involved in workshops and webinars could help in your journey in innovation. For instance, I learned coding by exploring various platforms for programming such as GitHub, Hexter.io, Khan Academy, and even YouTube, which played vital roles in my learning process before I'm being able to innovate solutions for a specific challenge. Next is to present your ideas and seek for opportunity. And last is to communicate and find someone who can facilitate you in this change. To make our ideas a reality, we have to communicate and collaborate with professionals and experts. We can't wait for a person to approach you and provide personalized feedbacks. Hence, we have to actively seek the guidance for mentorship and supervision. Personally, I've taken the initiative to write to experts in top time universities to get my innovative ideas and research off the ground. Despite the rejection from them simply due to my age or maybe my education background, I was fortunate enough to get a few lecturers and professors from both University of Science Malaysia and University of Cambridge to provide valuable advices for my improvement of my project. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to appreciate Professor Virus for his dedication for the past three years. I couldn't forget the ethical challenges that we faced during the research. Although collecting and sourcing for cancer cell samples are not under his job scope, but he never stops contacting other scientists or lecturers to get the cell samples. Additionally, I would like to urge every youth to take the initiative and be eager to participate in both national and international competitions to expand your knowledge and communication skills during the process of presenting your ideas to the judges. Competitions like KL Engineering Science Fair, organized by Utah, can be your platform to propose your ideas to professionals and gain constructive feedback from judges and experts. As I used to be a student who had to face major exams and tremendous amount of coursework to complete, I explore a significant skill that one has to develop. Memory sports, which is a part of a brain development training, really played a vital role in improving my speed in memorization. There are various techniques and skills pertaining to the improvement of my literacy. One of the methods is to remember numbers using acronyms and remember key phrases. Utilizing cursor object action system or the method of loci. The PAO system is a technique to visualize numbers into person, object, place, or even verbs. Whereas the method of loci is a strategy of memory enhancement which uses visualization of familiar spatial environments in order to enhance the recall of information. I was one of the winner of um, the Malaysia Mental Literacy Movement Memory Championship. And these skills that I have mastered actually helped me during my studies. Hence, I also, it also assists me in balancing both my academics and innovation involvements. Annually, Utah, KLESF, and MMLM will jointly organize the Mind Memory Competition, which I personally think that this is a very good platform for all the students and audience to train for their both the brain development and memory sports. By involving in STEAM education, this will help setting students up for future success and expose them to various disciplines holistically in order to develop their critical thinking skills. Moreover, students will also be equipped with a set of well-rounded skills that allow them to adapt to an evolving and fast-paced environment. As opposed to traditional models of teaching, the STEAM framework blurs the line between disciplines in order to encourage higher level of creativity and effectiveness when it comes to problem solving. To my mind, I believe giving a person a skill to visualize and sketch out his idea will make him more effective in his job down the road. Throughout my involvement in both international and national science 
innovation and invention competitions, I was able to explore the world and meet amazing light mind individuals from across the globe. Being constantly surrounded by these world-renowned PhDs, Nobel Prize winning scientists, and even successful entrepreneurs, I became obsessed and manifest success by latching into these scientific research. My network of connections is also expanded through these international competitions and conferences. I still keep in touch with my friends and collaborate on different projects which help to inspire younger generations to be involved in STEAM education. It would be a fascinating opportunity to have the authorities to establish STEM for, STEAM for Malaysia with the objective of unleashing the innovative power of individuals through a network of highly created advisors, mentors, peer collaboration and interaction. And these comprehensive resources and programming support will truly help all students in Malaysia. I believe that while knowledge is the engine of innovation, connection and collaboration are the fuel. It is truly vital to ensure all students in Malaysia have the same opportunity and equal access to all resources and facilities to support their innovation journey consistently. So this theme for Malaysia will not only be stimulating teenagers' interests or unlock their untapped potential in STEAM, but also to provide a premium platform for continuous support to students' innovation journey. And I believe that when you bring together a right mix of people with the shared intention and similar values, remarkable things will happen. So STEAM for Malaysia will be pro providing all the necessary support for innovation, including physical safety, transparency, empathy, compassion, connection, and the opportunity for creative collisions. So this will help unlocking unrealized value that can have a deep impact on markets, on the world, and on individuals who walk through these doors. Besides that, STEAM for Malaysia should be planned to equip with resources available to all Malaysian students who are looking to explore innovations and entrepreneurship at any stage. No doubt, this establishment for STEM for Malaysia will be a comprehensive, creative community for innovators, experts, and support systems. So the process of innovation is not always moved. It often requires specific environments to be in a place so the people involved are encouraged as well as enabled to generate ideas freely. To start with, it is a vast challenge for young teenagers to get access to laboratory equipment, samples, or apparatus to conduct experiments. Along with my experiences in international competitions, I observed that there's a massive gap in the research proficiency expectations. To give you an example, a high school student's research on developing a biomarker, non-invasive approach for melanoma diagnosis, or even machine learning technology for orthopedic surgeons are treated as university level of discovery among others. One of the unsolved challenge in the opportunity is the opportunity to, to participate in the ISEF Regenerant International Science and Engineering Fair, which is a really prestigious event where all global young innovators and brilliant researchers meet together and exchange ideas. Unfortunately, not all schools in Malaysia are eligible to participate in these events. Hence, I believe that all students in Malaysia should have the equal opportunity to take part in it. Along with my victorious pathway in my innovation journey, I've attained a most prestigious award recently. So in February 2020, I was the only delegate representing Malaysia and was awarded a second award in the medical category at Taiwan International Science Fair with the research of potential diagnosis of cancer cell utilizing optical spectroscopy. Oh, speaking of this um, scientific research, there are two videos that will be shared to you 
in order to have a greater idea on how my invention works. So my pathway in innovation has given me the sense of change making. And I realized that many young students in Malaysia have extraordinary untapped potential that we hold within. We just need to realize it. The world needs you, the society needs you. But lucky for you, the world is in the midst of this technological expansion from artificial intelligence to nanotechnology. And this has increased the connectivity amongst all of us all around the world. And people are finally realizing the true power that they hold within. I couldn't disagree with how the pandemic has affected the world detrimentally. But I would like to tell myself, listen, things are going to happen both good and bad. And I have the responsibility to allocate the goodness in my heart to as many people as possible. Hence, don't hesitate to get started at the end of the day to be a change maker. As young teenagers are always told that we are the next generation, we are the future doctors, lawyers, engineers, and activists. We are the leaders of tomorrow. But we don't have to wait until tomorrow to lead. Allow me to emphasize my motto which will provide you a small spark in your interest to be a change maker for year 2021. Dream big, start small, but most of all, start. As I mentioned earlier, I'm the founder of the Cambridge Global Institute. So we are currently organizing an international youth empowerment competition where participants and innovators from all around the globe will stand a chance to win a 100% full scholarship to the Immerse Education Online Insight Program. The submission deadline for this competition is on the 13th of April, year 2021. And for further inquiry, you can visit our website, cambridgegovalinstitute.com or contact me for further details. So as we mark the end of an hour long webinar on immersing into creative innovation pathway, I wish to commend all of you for having made out the time of your busy schedules to attend this valuable webinar. And on behalf of the webinar organizers, I would like to express my gratitude to all the audience here today for patience and cooperation, which has enabled us to conduct a highly fruitful webinar. And finally, of course, I cannot fail to thank our MC, Miss Lee, whose contribution we highly valued. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Paul, for your great sharing. Okay. Hope this could inspire the student and um, the students can pursue your passions. Okay, now we, we will go ahead and take some time for the question now. Um, participants, if you have any question, please type them in the chat box. Paul is here to answer your questions. So, um, you can ask him. Okay. Um, we wait for a while to see if any questions. So um, from the Zoom chat box, there are participants um, say hi to you. Yeah, they say hi and say um, thank to you for this um, brilliant sharing. Okay. 
Okay, let's have a look at the Facebook first. Um, currently, no other um, no other question from Facebook. So we come back to the Zoom chat box. Um, okay, Paul. Um, one question from Ang Yijing. She said, good afternoon. May I know more details about your research on cancerous cell? Yeah, sure. no problem. I would be willing to share it here. So um, just to a brief introduction about my research, which is called the Surgeon's VM. Um, it comprises of two core elements, which we call the non-invasive peer sensing analyzer, which has the functionality to provide quantitative and reproducible results, which are compatible with IoT gateway platform. So, and the next one will be a computational imaging recognition system, which is meant for segmentation of data and features of attraction, coupled with acquisition and analysis of the RGB value principle. So when the both of this system for my cancer cell research, when they join together, this will synthesize an ultimate and robust surgeon's VM, which is developed using machine learning approach and applying artificial intelligence technology to quickly identify patterns and trends. So um, if you still have any inquiries about um, the cancer cell research or you need any more details, you can feel free to email me or contact me. Yeah. Okay, Paul, um, this is another question. What are the brain development training? Okay, um, so as mentioned in my presentation, so um, for me, um, brain development training is mainly about memory sports. So um, it is where you use different methods to memorize a specific information and it is not like you hardly memorize it by heart but you use interesting methods and skills and technique to memorize it with a long-term situation so as what i mentioned is using mnemonics which makes the content interesting and also to use acronyms to remember key phrases does that answer your question Okay, thank you. Okay, while well, waiting for um, see whether we still have any questions, just uh, to let you know, we uh, received the message at the Facebook is um, also to thank you. Um, thank you for yeah, sharing sure. this. Okay, so if, thank you. Um, if you have any question to ask Paul, um, you, you may contact him, or if not, you also can leave your uh, question or any comment at our Facebook live uh, video. Paul can um, log into it after this. Um, okay, Paul, also from Ang Yijin. How do you apply the concept of your research for the current STEM and medical crisis? Okay, sure. Um, so, um, generally, Cancer cells worldwide, I mean, cancer worldwide, the death from cancer worldwide are projected to reach over 13 million in year 2030s. So this will prove that my research is actually, actually a very crucial um, invention to help for early diagnosis and also a more accurate cancer treatment. So as I can remember, there's one, um, issue just happened where this is there's one girl um he what she was diagnosed with a tumor in her mouth and she was just a few months old and she has to travel all the way back all the way to london hospital to get herself treated so after the treatment although they successfully uh, removed all the tumors but there is still a risk of remission so that's why um, my research come into um, an essential part of this medical crisis where it is able to provide specific and accurate area of cells to be removed to prevent the regrowth of the cancer cells or tumor.
Okay, so there's a question called, uh, I mean, question about where can we get the device? So uh, if you are referring to the Mobility Crusader, I would say that um, please contact me if you have really any inquiries about um, purchasing this um, device or maybe to know more about this device. So just contact me with the contact info that was stated above. Is there any question? So, dear participants, if you have any question, you can um, type it into chat box. Um, just in case if we miss out your question, please um, paste the question for us again. Okay, um, thank you, Anyi Jin, for your questions and thank you for the suggestions. But um, I have already come up with this um, future development goals. So what I'm planning to do is to make this device into non-invasive where it will help um, to perform diagnosis of cancer cells during early stages. And regarding to polarizing cancer cells for more accurate and precise diagnosis of malignant cells, it is more of applicable during surgical process. So um, my main motive of developing this research is not to assist surgeons during the surgical process, but is to provide everyone, especially everyone in this society, to get a chance with a low cost cancer diagnosis at early stages. So just to prevent that, because I know that cancer diagnosis costs a lot and it requires to undergo MRI scanning and other types of diagnosis. So it means that not everyone is able to get a regular treatment or maybe a regular diagnosis for cancers. So this device that I am going to invent will provide everyone a chance to get early diagnosis of cancer or tumor. I hope that answers your question. Um, please email me if you are really interested in knowing my research. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Mm, thank you, Paul, for answering the question. Mm. So we, I think we just wait for one sh uh, short while. So just let us know if we haven't answered your questions. Okay, so um, if there's any question, um, maybe we can uh, answer later. So um, just um, for Paul, Paul, is there anything else you want to cover before a wrap up? Um, I think I already covered up everything. So if you all still have any questions about the competition that I mentioned earlier, or maybe um, anything related to my research, or uh, you want to have any um, maybe mentoring session from me, I can um, help all of you in terms of um, getting stuck for being a change maker. 
So um, just feel free to contact me, whether through WhatsApp or maybe emails. I'll be always there to help you. Okay, so we, we have seen the um, comments from our participants say truly an eye opener for, uh, for him on your project. So uh, to answer another question, what is the meaning of KRSF? Mm, KRSF um, stands for Kuala Lumpur Engineering Science Fair. So if you are new, um, you can um, visit our Facebook page or our website um, to know more. We will post our event at our Facebook page um, regularly or so. So, um, okay. Um, I think um, it's not like we have covered all of the questions. Okay, so... Um, Okay, I would like to uh, inform that we have the feedback form. We have posted the sign in, sign out link also. So if you uh, want to get the e-certificate, kindly sign in uh, and sign out using our link. Okay, so I think that's all for the webinar today. Okay, so once again, thank you, Paul. Okay, then, um, okay, so I just repeat, so kindly help us to fill up the feedback form after the webinar. The responses are very important in helping us to assess the effectiveness of the webinar. So um, the participants are saying thank you to you, Paul. So um, Paul, you can read, read, read it. Okay, so um, sure. on behalf of the uh, organizer, we uh, appreciate you being here today. So before we end the webinar, so I would like to request uh, everyone in the Zoom here, please turn on your camera. camera. We will take uh, a few screenshots uh, as a group photo. Okay, so everyone, please uh, get ready. Turn on your camera, please. Okay, we wait for a while, yeah. Um, everyone, you can turn on the camera. Okay, are you ready? Okay, we will take a few shots, yeah. Okay, one first. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Then one moment. Uh. Okay, we have next one. One moment. Okay, okay, smile. Uh. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm showing your face here so Paul can see you. You can say hi to Paul. Okay, so hmm, okay, before we end this session, I would like to inform that we will have the next webinar at 3 to 4 o'clock. The title is How to Serve Safely Without Being Eaten by Sharks, Internet Security 101. This uh, webinar will be conducted by Utah lecturer Ms. Tan Li Yin. So you can join us again using the same Zoom link. So we hope you can join us. Okay, see you later at 3 p.m. Okay, thank you. Thank you for our speaker, Paul, today. And also thank you all the participants for joining us. Thank you.